welcome back. News tonight about the gun that was used in the Washington Navy Yard shooting. A federal law enforcement official says the gunman etched sayings into the shotgun like, quote, better off this way and, quote, my elf gun, whatever that means. Two days before the shooting, the gunman spent a few hours at a shooting range, paid $419 for a Remington 870 shotgun. He passed a federal background check, according to the store's attorney. This, of course, raises the usual questions about the efficiency of background checks and about gun control in general. Invariably, after these mass shootings, which have become all too common, comes the gun control debate and op-eds on both sides of the issue. In a column for the Daily Beast, conservative David Frum wrote that America's uniquely grisly record on gun death cannot be addressed without addressing guns and that, for instance, a better mental health provision would help reduce gun massacres. Frum is also a CNN political con commentator. In her op-ed for The Washington Times, Emily Miller argues that there isn't a single gun control law that could have prevented the Navy Yard massacre. We'll speak with Emily Miller in just a moment. Our panel is with us again. And in the fifth chair tonight, Bill Christo, editor of the Weekly Standard. Thanks very much for being with us. Good to be with Do you. Do you think this will change anything in the gun control debate? Or is it just going to the usual players come forward and say the usual thing? Yeah, I don't think that's quite a fair way to characterize it. I think people have strong views on this. They've developed them over years. They've evaluated the evidence. Uh, this won't change anything. The gun that was used is not a gun that anyone has proposed controlling. Right, the shotgun. Right. Do, do you, Cornell, do you think this will change anything? Well, uh, no. Well, from a, from a, from a standpoint of Congress, no, because you know th th there's not a body count number that you can get to where people who are dug in in ideological positions are going to move on gun control. What's going what's going to have to take is those those voters in Middle America and those voters in those red districts, quite frankly, to get upset enough and say, you know what. 80% of us believe in sort of stricter, restri uh, stricter sort of uh, restrictions on, 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 on handguns. L let's vote out the people who are in fact standing in the way. And until that happens, no, nothing's going to change. But you've done polling on this. I mean, my understanding of, of the support and, and for those who are opposed to it, that those who are opposed to more limits on, on, on guns feel more, more strongly about it and uh, are much more passionate about it than those who it's not a voting issue for. Well, is that true? In the past, it has not been a top of the sort of list voting issues outside of parts of the South. But I got to think when you see the body count continue and continue in middle America, this does become an issue. And when you have 80% of the American people sort of saying, okay, this is common sense, we, sh we need more restrictions, it does become, it will Look, become a voting issue. We have a, we have a Second Amendment. This country is different than other countries. And the tradition that Bill talked about is deep and real, and it's about American liberty and freedom. And I think gun, I mean, I honestly think that once you have this number of guns in a society, the ability to actually bring them down is almost zero. And certainly in the process of trying to control them, you're going to unleash criminals with, with much worse and a much greater ability to avoid the law in getting them. So I've, I'm reconciled to it. I just want those who support gun rights to recognize that the cost of those gun yes. rights are many, many innocent deaths. And just own it. But Don't pretend that, really... that this is some weird side product. It is the absolute result. No other country has this level of fatalities. And it's because guns, which are, by the way, the most cowardly of weapons, uh, it, was, it was an act of cowardice. You, you don't have any strength to kill a woman or a child with a gun from a distance. This man was a coward as, uh, as well as anything else. I think they have to own the fact that yes, we believe in this freedom, and yes, the, the, the damage is dozens and dozens of children and innocent people dead every year, let, and own it. Let me bring in Emily Miller, senior opinion editor of the Washington Times, author of Emily Gets Her Gun, But Obama Wants to Take Yours. Do you, do you, you heard what Andrew said, do you, do you own that? Do you accept that? Well, all I know is what happened on Monday in the Navy Yard was absolutely horrendous, obviously. The things that I say there can be things that can be done, Anderson, that's what I wrote in my column today. For example, this shooter was in Rhode Island recently, called the police and said, I'm hearing aliens talk to me and I've had to switch hotels. The police should have put him in a mental hospital. If he had been put in patient mental hospital, as Dr. Drew referenced in the previous segment, he would have been put in the prohibited category. But here's a kicker. He was in Rhode Island. Rhode Island has one of, of this country's worst records for putting mental health records into the FBI's NICS check. So had he been put into a mental hospital in Rhode Island, we wouldn't know about it. So he still would have passed his background check. So until this background check system is fixed, which means mental health records put into the system, and I suggest people look at fixnix.org. You can look at every state, and Massachusetts is another horrible one that won't put these records in. How are we supposed to catch these really psychotic, so, you know, schizophrenic people 
if the records aren't being put into the system. That's something positive we all could work on. Which is something that the NRA says a lot. Am I hearing you correctly that, that you are now for a universal background check? Because many of the Republicans in the House are not. No, Cornell, that's actually not the issue I'm saying at all. If you, I'm talking about the current issue we have in this country. It is illegal to have a gun if you've been adjudicated for mental illness or if you have been put inpatient in a mental hospital. That's a good thing, because none of us want crazy people having guns. Look what happened. Can we not use the we term crazy people, this... please? People who have Why? mental illness are not crazy. There's a oh, huge I, spectrum of mental illness. This man is schizophrenic. He's a I, I, I'm not talking about this case, but when you say, people, when you change you know, Guys, guys, guys okay, stop, wait, just, let's just put a break on this for a second. Let's just not talk over each other. It just drives everybody okay. nuts. I'm sorry. So, and I just like well, it. I, just don't I, like, I was saying, I, 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 you may not like... Yeah, As Andrew, Andrew's saying, point is anybody who's in a mental hospital is not, it, it doesn't mean you're crazy. But okay, go ahead. somebody who's go ahead. paranoid, I'm referring to the shooter on Monday. If Andrew wants to protect him, that's his own problem. I'm telling you, someone who slaughters 12 people and is hearing voices and is a paranoid schizophrenic is the definition of crazy or insane. Andrew, t and you don't need PC police to be stopping that. Andrew, that's and real. And okay, he should have been in a it. mental got hospital. Got it. Emily, Andrew, to Emily's point, uh, and it's the point the NRA makes, is that a lot of these states are not reporting uh, all the information they could be reporting and should be reporting in order to, to make this background check that does currently exist more effective. And of course, I agree with that, absolutely. My only issue there is I think we should be careful if we're trying to destigmatize mental illness to suddenly broadly call anybody with mental illness crazy, crazy people. That actually makes it less likely for people to seek help. It actually re-stigmatizes it. That's not it. the issue. Andrew, you're but talking about two different things. We're talking about what can we stop mass shootings, which are very rare. They count for about, according to the Congressional Research Service, about 18 people a year. They're very rare, but the one thread we have, we talk about Aurora, Newtown, the Navy Yard, all of them. They are increasing, is such though. Yeah. They are not increasing. Yes, they are. As a, no, that's a completely, you, based on what fact? Based on the fact that every year there's more and more of that's them. So true. Okay, Cornell, let's talk about real facts, which is Congressional Research Service, which is the Congressional Arm of Congress, did a report in April, looked at 10 years. There is no increase, there is no decrease. They are unpredictable. There's been about 500 people killed by these mass shootings. So just throwing out these things does not make them to but, be but true. We have to talk about this, facts here. The CRS does say in that same report that there is that there is a lot of information we do not know about how people use guns and they that they recommend, and, and I, I, I don't want to misquote it, but they recommend sort of not a database, but, but gathering more information, actually studying how people use guns in this country, which is something they, a lot of groups groups resist. Andrew, that's true. They, I mean, Anderson, that's true that they did say that, but back to the facts, if we're going to just talk about facts on this show, it, it is estimated it's been an average of 18 people killed by mass shootings. When the president says that this is increasing, that is not true. But Emily, what is, what we do have is gun control and all gun crime has decreased since 1991 by 40%. As gun ownership in this country has increased to about 300 million guns in this country now, gun crime, all crime has gone down. There are about 8,000 people killed every year by gun crime. About a quarter of those are criminals. About 22 people, 18 people a year in these mass shootings. But can we, we, talk can we about just talk about violence, another fact? Because the other fact is what Andrew said, which is regardless whether they're going up or down in this country, they happen every couple of months to the point... No, they have not happened since no, uh, okay, last okay, okay, to, okay, to the point let that people are honestly well, let, let her finish her sentence, and then we can have an actual conversation. Right. Go ahead. It doesn't... You know, it happened in Norway, and it was... It, the whole country came to a, a halt. It happened in Scotland at Dunblane. The whole country came to a halt. This happens, and, you know, my kids said in, in, in high school today, it was like, oh, yeah, there was another shooting. I mean, what, what do we do about the fact that we... T we we now just accept as part well, of our em life. Emily's saying can... there is something we can do, and that's report. And, and again, Emily, stop me if I'm wrong. But 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 follow the current laws. You know, report more accurately for, to make this the the checks that, that exist to make them more efficient. But he to would, actually make this, them this work. shooter wouldn't have gotten well, picked up is, because the police didn't actually. Well, he did do try anything. to buy a handgun, he, which was he was prevented to. No, he, he did, did not. Anderson, that's not accurate. This is a gun range that I go to, sharpshooters. He did not try to buy anything other than the shotgun he bought. So, I mean, the Vice President Biden has encouraged quite a okay, lot. The, the, the report I, I just saw said that, that he tried, attempted not to buy true. a handgun, but because he did, he was from out of state, he was informed. That's not true, Anderson. That was written. The New York Times actually said that he wrote, tried to buy a rifle. Right. I, I, I'm not talking about that report. I'm talking about a handgun. We'll, we'll, we'll double not check that. Okay. We'll okay. double check this. But, but clear, uh, clearly, the background check that exists 
it, it wasn't an issue because of uh, he bought a shotgun. He has no and, mental health. Right, and he bought a shotgun and nothing nothing came up. But look, on, on studying this, I mean, there's been a ton of social science work on crime and on gun violence and what the efficacy or lack thereof of various kinds of gun control laws. J James Q. Wilson, who's a great social scientist, a teacher of mine, and I think maybe of Andrews too, um, I was not a particular gun rights guy, I think, to start off. I think he was actually an open-minded social scientist. He studied this over the years and came to the conclusion that most of these gun control efforts, and Andrew's right about this, in a country that starts off with 300 million guns, so that's just the fact that we have to deal with, don't do much good. Some of them have contrary, you know, have sort of perverse consequences. I agree with you on the mental health issue. Everyone's now saying, because this guy was clearly disturbed, that, you know, we have to report everyone who ever goes into a mental health hospital or seeks mental health treatment. I'm not so sure that's a great idea. You would discourage people. I and mean, the people have episodes or they get depressed, they get treatment. I don't know, 20 years from now, do you want that to be in a database? I mean, I don't have a view on this. I'm just saying these things as a matter of actual public policy, as opposed to reacting to a terrible tragedy are much more complicated. But here's the problem. We, we, I, I agree. I, I, we, I came with this, you know, I'm, I'm English, so I came with this, came to this country 30 years ago looking at this country. It's a different country. And it does place a premium on freedom in a way that other countries do not. And if the result of that is that when you look at other countries, the rate of murder, of fatal murder, not violence, but fatalities, because God knows the English are violent as hell, but they don't have enough guns to with kill each other. Have access we them. nonetheless will have, because it's a free country with a Second Amendment, uh, we will have much higher levels of carnage through gunfire than any other country, and we do. We, we got to take a break, and, and Emily raised a good point about the misreporting uh, that a lot of uh, media outlets did, uh, including, uh, well, pretty much everybody did yesterday, and I just want to clear up. This is from the lawyer for, for sharpshooter small arms ranger, Emily, I think you go there. This is from yeah. their lawyer, J. Michael Slocum. Uh, the shooter did not attempt to buy an AR-15, as we said, from the range. He did ask about purchasing a handgun. No brand was specified, but he was told he could not purchase a handgun except for delivery to his home state through another federally licensed firearm dealer. And that's when right. he decided to purchase the, the shotgun. So right. we were sort federal of both law, right you can all, Yeah, federal law, you can't purchase out-of-state handguns. Right. So, uh, listen, Emily Miller, it's great to have you on the program again. 